Welcome to the Scaling Therapy Practice. This is the show where we encourage you to take intentional steps towards sustainable growth. My name's James Marland. This we this week we have uh, Lisa Mustard and Don Gabriel with us. Hello. Hi. Hi. So glad that you are here today to talk about our topic, lead magnets and adding value before the sale. Uh, we're going to get into our tip of the week, but first Lisa's going to tell us all all about lead magnets and what they are. Well, this is a really big topic and we could probably I could probably spend hours talking about lead magnets because it's probably one of my favorite things to help uh, therapists or clinicians kind of wrap their brains around. And so why do we need a lead magnet? That is a question that comes across my DMs a bunch. Well, we need a lead magnet because we want to grow our email list. And the reason we want to grow our email list is so we can stay connected to our audience mm. and to our customers. Because here is the reality of social media. Social media can go away at any second. We've all experienced an outage. We've all experienced maybe being, who knows, maybe been like the algorithm, the algorithm changes. changes. Or, yeah. um, but we own our email list. And people who who find you on social media... You want to work to get them on an email list so you can start nurturing that relationship. You can start to to work on adding to the know, like, and trust. And I have a ton of lead magnets. Over the years, I have tried a bunch of different lead magnets. I love lead magnets. I just love creating them. I could probably do it all day long. Um, but I know something that we definitely want to talk about is how do you get people to get onto your lead magnet or how do they even discover your lead magnet? So I, I want to cover that. Maybe that will come up as we kind of get moving into this. So there are a number of ways to, well, first of all, if you're going to have an email list, you you need to pick an email provider and there's lots of freebies out there. Mm -hmm. um, I personally have been using AWeber for as long as I can remember. Dawn looks like she's giving me the amen. Yeah, me I've, too. Used, I've used <laughs> AWeber and I do like their mm -hmm, service yeah. and their customer service was pretty easy to use. Yes. Too. And and yeah. over the years, they have definitely upped their um the like newsletter style, the things you can do in their email. I really love it. And um, and then you can always start with them for free. There's other ones out there. I know some people use MailChimp. Um, that's another popular one. Um, so, you know, do your homework and see which one you like the best. Don't spend too much time. You know, don't go into the thousand Facebook groups and ask for why and blah, blah, blah. Just pick one. Just pick one and go with it. <laughs> you can always, you can always move later. When, because, um, even if you're not sure what the future holds for you and your personal brand or your business brand, it's still a really good idea to go ahead and start that email list three days ago or three months ago um, mm -hmm. because it's really important to have one. You're going to wish three years from now that you had started your email list 10 years ago. It's just one of those things that once you kind of get going with it and see the power of it, you realize, man, I should have been doing this a long time ago. All right. So lean magnets. I've heard them called a bunch of things over the years. The one I love the most is called the ethical bribe. So, you know, you are asking your potential client or customer to give them, give you their email address. And in return, you're going to give them something of value that they really, really want. And that depends on what it is that you do. So I could come up. I mean, give me, tell me what you do right now, Don. What would be what would be something that you would like to grow an email list on or for? Um, I, you mean for my personal branding? Yeah. I, yeah, I, um, soul care and spiritual formation for therapists who want to, um, yeah, yeah holistically okay. be better. So right off the bat, I have so many ideas for you. You could do like, Lisa's the like, idea I am person. the idea fairy. So you could do she a number really of is. things depending on probably what you like to do, what you can quickly to do, mm -hmm. what's going to take you something you can turn around pretty quickly. I mean, you could do an ebook. You could do a checklist. You could even do, a, um, gosh, you could do like an audio meditation. You could do mm -hmm. a email challenge. You could do an email series. You could do a quiz. I love a quiz. Quizzes convert really well. I highly recommend that if you're thinking about a lead magnet, look at quizzes. People always want to know where they fall in personality do you, tests. Always. Do you, do you have a quiz provider? Because there's a ton mm -hmm. of, there There seems to be a ton of them with different yeah. price points. I mean, uh, you know, all transparency aside, I am an affiliate for Try Interact or Interact Quizzes, um, and they have they have lots of templates on their site already that you can go and look at, and then you can you have to purchase like a, a monthly or a yearly subscription, but you then set that up with your email provider. So whatever 
whatever quiz you would come up, come up with, you would then attach it to your email provider. And then afterwards, you would have like an email welcome sequence that would start to nurture everybody who signed up for your quiz. And most of the time for people to get their quiz results, they're going to have to give you their email. I have done quizzes mm-hmm. in the past. And I tell you, I don't have one right now, but I have done them in the past and they are the highest conversion rates that I have seen. Everybody wants to know what their personality is when it comes to whatever it, it is that you offer. That one is really fun. You know, what's your, um, what, when I did a couple of years ago was what's your activewear personality? Cause I love activewear and I was mm-hmm. um, promoting <laughs> a brand. And so I can't tell you how easily that one converted. Everybody wants to know what their activewear personality is based on the type of activity you do. This is what, you know, what type of activewear you should wear. It's not currently um, out there, so you can't, you can't see it. <laughs> um, I've also done one like, um, what is your additional stream of income personality? Um, I've, I've worked on that one. I haven't released that one yet. Um, so quizzes are great. And, um, so Don, you could do a number of things. I mean, James, you could do a checklist for what you do. You could do an ebook. You could do even a compilation of, you know, um, for those of us that have been podcasting for a while, you could even do like a playlist of, Mm. you know, episodes based on topics. You could even just do a playlist based on music that you like. You could just pick a playlist for music that you like to work to. I mean, there's so many things that you could do. Sorry. You just hit your 100th episode, right? Yeah. So you have a lot to draw from for your spiritual yeah. formation. And and I remember one of your episodes had, had a, a playlist of things. I think it was when, you know, I, I don't remember which episode it was. I just remember writing mm-hmm. about it. <laughs> and finding all the links for it. Yeah. <laughs> but Spotify you. allows you to create playlists, right? Like they yeah. allow you to create links for playlists. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah, you could do, well, I mean, you could even do like, if you have a hundred episodes, you can break them down into here, you know, five episodes, your top five about, um, you know, what like specific topics around your niche. And so people don't have to like scroll all hundred. They just go straight to the episode that they, that they want to hear. Um, mm. that's a, that's a great, that's a great option. Um, yeah, so I have a couple of uh, oh, so another lead magnet is you could give a, a discount on your products or services. So if you one of the ones that so let me back up. When I first started doing the pod courses, I knew that I couldn't just sell on social media all the time. Like I knew that would get old promoting them all the time yeah. on social media. So I knew even before I started, I needed to grow an email list. So I worked with my web developer, and he's like, "Why don't you give away your first one for free? If, who doesn't want free continuing education?" I got so many signs up sign ups. Eventually, I moved to half off your first continuing education uh, pod course. And so that's now growing my lead magnet for people who are interested in con- continuing education. I have another lead magnet that's 50 ideas for therapists to create additional streams of income. So it's 50 ideas. It's just like a checklist. And that was the one that I said to you was when you sign up for that one, eventually one of my emails in the sequence is all about lead magnets. Um, another thing that I've done for lead magnet, which I really love. And if you have some time and a little bit of money to put into this is actually doing a private podcast feed. So you could create, um, or another lead, like I have so many ideas. Another lead is actually doing a limited series podcast, uh, for newsletter subscribers. You could do it for that. Or, or, yeah, so like if you sign up for my newsletter, you're going to get five, you know, five episodes all on X, Y, and Z that only you only get when you only sign up for, for newsletter subscriptions. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, wow. Yeah. I'm, How do you do that? Oh, well, that's another yeah. question. But anyway, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm writing so many things down right now. Well, it would be a tag if you use AWeber, like we talked about, it would be a tag. You know, oh, if people sign it. up through this form, they get this tag which you subscribe them to your nurture sequence and your, uh, you know, the other, the other sequence. Yeah. So it could be like that or in your, in the email with the tag, it can send them to a landing page that has all the links to the episodes or the links to the the content that you want. So it's not, it sounds like, Oh, how do I do that? But it's really just directing people and links. Yeah. That's awesome. And that's why you need the email provider. Doing this inside your own Gmail account would be murderous. <laughs> it would be a nightmare <laughs> it would. to organize and segment all the people who come through you because the you can you can tag which people come through which lead magnet, and then that allows you to segment your audience. Oh, this person came through my 
therapy practice webpage. So they might be more interested in this. Oh, this person came through my my product or my service lead magnet. So they might be interested in more products or services that that I have. So you would send the right email to the right people. Yeah. And there's also uh, services out there where you can create a private podcast feed. Like um, I'm using Hello Audio. You can use them. You can also use Substack. If you're familiar with Substack, I believe there's a way that you can create like an audio link through there and people yeah. have to sign up for that. So I think Substack is really cool. Um, I get all, I sub, um, subscribe to a lot of newsletters on Subs, um, Substack and I think it's really <laughs> neat. Um, yeah. So I know that James and I were chatting earlier about, you know, we can have all these ideas. We can come up with like the best lead magnet, but the problem can often be how do you get people to even know that you have a lead magnet? Well, that is the million dollar question because traffic is everything, right? If we don't have traffic, mm -hmm. then we don't have an email list. Um, so that's something that, you know, you when you think about how do you grow your email list, um, that's that's the million dollar question. Like, how do you get the traffic? So uh, I like Pinterest to grow my um, email list. Pinterest, I know. Really? Don's giving me that look like, what? So here's the cool <laughs> oh thing about gosh. Pinterest. I know this is why you want to use Pinterest because Pinterest is like Google in the sense of people get on Pinterest to solve problems. They type in how to it's questions. So, mm -hmm. so instead of thinking about yeah. it as like a social media product, it's actually a search engine, right? And so once you start kind of thinking, because think about last time you got on Pinterest, James said he was looking at it for like ideas. Basement ideas. Ideas. Well, mm hmm what 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 trim do you use? How do you? Uh, we had to put up doors for the laundry room. So what type of doors would work? Uh, paint uh, colors, uh, decorations. Like there's no windows. So what? How do you make it look homey? Lighting. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, everything. <laughs> all sorts of questions about the like basements. And uh, I had a board, and I just collected pins and threw just threw things on there. And Pinterest said, "Oh, you like might be remodeling. Here are ten other ideas." Right for you. Right. So it was, uh, uh, it was infectious. Yeah. Uh, I love Pinterest. And I would rather put a little bit of money behind Pinterest ads than I would Facebook or Instagram. Um, and that's really in the past how, because Pinterest will work. It just, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the algorithm to pick up on your pins and to get the, tr you know, get the traffic in front of you. But if you're willing to put a little bit of money into Pinterest ads, um, you can grow your, your email list pretty, pretty quickly. Now, I mean, that all depends on your lead magnet and then, you know, um, what, what, you're, what you're giving them in return. But I, I have seen some pretty quick growth with using Pinterest. So the ads. pin would take them to your web page, which asks them if you want this download, sign up. Yes. Is that how that process Yeah. Works? So, I mean, you can do it like that. You can send it to a landing page or you can send it to like a blog post or you have it, you know, in the mm -hmm. blog post. Um, mm -hmm. so there's lots of different ways that you can, that you can do it on, on Pinterest, you know, definitely have it in Instagram and definitely have it on Facebook. You know, if you're in the baz bajillion Facebook groups for therapists, you know, we're always like, you know, marketing Mondays are the thing where people mm -hmm. say, I have a, you know, a, a checklist for getting your private practice started. Um, you know, how many of those have I downloaded over the past, well, not 15, past like couple of years of a bunch. Um, I think honestly, one of the best lead magnets that we have is our podcast. And so I've seen mm -hmm. really great growth for my lead magnets through my podcast. Um, and it's just the more you promote your podcast, make sure your lead magnet is on each of your episodes where they can, like, if you go to my website and you want to listen to an episode, I'm always pointing people to my website. I'm always wanting them to go listen to my podcast on my website, not on I mean, yeah, I, I, if, you, if all you can do is get to Apple and get on Apple Podcasts, great. But if I'm going to put a link anywhere, it's going to be to my site because I'm always going to have in my show notes. I'm going to have that lead magnet right there. And if they're on my website and they go to pod, like they're just going to click around, right? And so maybe they'll hit my pod course page and they'll, the pop-up will show up and it says get 50% off your first pod course. And then they'll see my other stuff too if they go to my resources page, you know, so they'll see you want people on your website. and so. I highly recommend having some type of pop up or form, right? I mean, Don, I know you put your um, your therapist matrix in the middle of your website, and it's awesome. I just when people were asking me about it, I just said, "Here's the website. Just scroll down, you'll see it." 
So Thank I hope you. that that was, you know, bringing you people. But um, yeah, I mean, it's having something of value that your audience is dying to have. And it doesn't have to be anything. I mean, you know, just and I joke around and say, how many private pa- practice checklists do I have? You know, people still want to collect all the checklists. And then once you have them on your email list, that's where you nurture the relationship to then maybe they'll want to book a call with you or buy your course or even ask you questions, you know. Um, but you have to you have to work. You have to work for the right or to um, to be in somebody's email. I feel like that's a, a it's a wonderful privilege that they're giving us is to continue to email. Um, and another thing about those email providers, you can see your stats. So you can see how many people open your email. You can see how many people mm-hmm. click on your link, um, all that stuff. So, so you're, you're saying you're not just hammering people with buy buy now email marketing messages <laughs> in your email. No. You're just like, no. Once you got them, you don't just you know try to try to get them to buy something right away. What do you do? How do you, oh, how, you you you're like you nurture them. I yeah. know it's, I'm being yeah. facetious, but. Right. Uh, so what do you include in the email to uh, nurture people? You know, I feel like that's so um, specific to the to the person writing the email and to the mm-hmm. relationship that they are trying to build with their audience. Because you might send that first one or two emails and, it, and you might get some unsubscribes, but that's OK. People are going to fall off your list. That's all right. They're not your people. So don't don't have a don't be so upset if people unsubscribe. I people unsubscribe from my list all the time. It's like I'm right. not for them. That's fine you know, I don't want you to hate me. I want you to be able to get away from me. If you, if you don't like my emails, like, hit unsubscribe. we don't want you upset with me. Um, you know, and I've had people write me back and, and they love what I do. So you're going to, what do they say? You can't be, um, you can't, you're not everybody's cup of tea, you know? So you mm. have to just be true to your voice. And, you know, the whole thing about email marketing, and we could probably do a whole other episode on that. Um, you know, I try to email once a week to my list. Some people do once a month. Um, some people do three times a week. It really just depends on, I don't always, you know, in my, in my emails, I usually say like, this is new on the podcast, um, you know, new, new pod courses out or just, you know, Hey, I found this free resource. I thought of you, maybe you guys would want this, or here's a free training from somebody that I'm not even connected to, but I know everybody needs ethics. So, Hey, here's a free, Mm -hmm. here's a free ethics course. Um, it really, you know, just. I don't, I, th- I think you just have to find your voice in, in email and um, be open to trying new things and pivoting when you, you need to. Cool. Yeah. So you said, well, I have three questions on uh, lead magnets before we get into that. Did you have a tool or tip for us, Lisa? Well, I feel like I've mentioned so many already. That so. was your tool and tip. Okay. okay. I don't know. Okay. I mean, tool, like I said, if you want to do a quiz, there's lots of them out there. There's I really yeah, let's t- try interact is good. Okay. So go over there. You can see temp- they already have templates on there. So you can just click around and, and look at what they've already. They already have quizzes on there that you can take as like a potential customer and just oh. decide like if self-help is one of them, you know, health and nutrition, psychology, like they have a bunch of different uh, topics. So you can or you can create your own. Um, so that one, I love Aweber, like I said, for email and Canva is always great to create your lead magnet. Um, that's yes. always, always an easy thing to use. I mean, easy. Well, type in worksheet and your topic right? and they'll give you something similar. Right. It's crazy how, how you, you can just put that in and then put in your own checklist and you're done. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. All right. So let's ask some questions about lead magnets. Uh, we probably covered this a little bit, but um, why should somebody even have a lead magnet? Why do you want to have a lead magnet and add value before the sale? Why should somebody do that? Because it's, it's way more people want to they want to buy from people they know, like and trust, mm. you know. So um, think about who you feel like you know, like, and trust and who you buy things from, you know? So it's like the podcast. Like I couldn't, I had to, you know, with my podcast, it's like I had to have a certain amount of episodes going before people would probably go, okay, I'll give her my email. You know, she seems like she's giving value. She's, she seems like I could listen, you know, I like what she has to say. She brings on interesting people. Um, so, or, I mean, you can try to just sell, 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 but um, like I said, it's hard to just sell from social media because the algorithms don't, they don't favor it. I mean, you could definitely put ads up. Um, that's going to cost you some money. Facebook and Instagram, it, you know, 
if you're selling something, you they like they don't want to just give you. They know what they have. They know that the the platform that they have is um, very valuable. So you're gonna have to pay to if you have a business um, a business page. It's your stuff can get buried a little bit more. Um, but so if you can boost a post or you can, um, you know, run an ad, to, you want to run it to I think to your lead magnet because you want to get people on your email list. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. What What would you say, Don? Is a reason yeah. for using this? Yeah, I would say I kind of want to break it down a little deeper. The no like and trust. I mean, it. I think when I first was learning this whole lead magnet thing. I I was learning from consultants who had like 10,000, 20,000 mm. like on their email list. And it was so overwhelming that I was like, I just got stuck and I was trying to do this lead magnet and it took me like hours and days and turned into months. And I was trying to perfect this one thing. And finally, and finally it was like, first, first of all, like you already have a few followers, ask them what yeah. they want, what they need. And, and kind of like a deeper level of them knowing and trusting you is you're creating something for them mm. and it doesn't have to be amazing but it is like what your audience needs and so even if you have 10 find out what those 10 are doing and wanting and focus on the 10 don't focus on 10,000 just focus on the 10 and keep creating content for that person or that 10 or that 20 and so i feel like that those lead magnets will create more value and they'll share it with people. And there's so many people out there. There's so many consultants. There's so many, whatever you do, there's 10 more of you or 30, 50 more of you. And so it's like, you have to stand out. So creating something that is practical and they also like you, it's going to be a winning combination. That's fantastic. Uh, I do, I do think um, we could get caught in the overwhelm, you know, oh, oh, yeah. I got to make it perfect for like this giant audience. But you're really just creating for the people who connect with you. And if you already have 10 people, those are your people. You know, they stayed yeah. with you and stuck with you. I really yeah. like that idea. And just the simple, simple, the simple thing. Oh, just ask them, you know, <laughs> what do you need? Uh, getting customer feedback and like your dream client feedback is is invaluable. Uh, yeah. I wanted to talk about the the chain of uh, value somebody put into me before I bought into their consulting program. And it wasn't cheap, uh, but they I've discovered them on a free webinar and then they got I got on their email list. Then they gave me another free webinar and some handouts and then some more email. And then some time passed and I took the same webinar again and more email. And then I decided, you know what? I've been listening to this guy for six months to eight months or something. I really like it. I connect with it. I think I could, I need, um, he's selling me um, on this selling me. He's convincing me that he has what I need with all this great free content. Oh yeah. He also invited me to a Facebook group and they had like weekly videos and things, all this work, all this free content. And then, then I bought his 3000, <laughs> I don't know what it was, $3,000 <laughs> program. <laughs> which I still use some of the concepts today. It was called Atlas, uh, heart-centered marketing. And it was great. Uh, he's a Kajabi. He, I, I found him on Kajabi. He's just, he just goes into the Kajabi. Well, I think he's um, hired by them now, but he goes into the Kajabi uh, Facebook groups and just gives his advice, not trying to sell you mm -hmm. things, just trying to connect with the people who he connects with. And mm -hmm. over time, and he, and re he respected the time, uh, I was like, yeah, I need this. I, I got to have more of what this is. And I'm willing to invest time and money and energy into that product. And I felt like that was such a great way to to sell. Like he was doing all this pre-selling, you know, yeah. pre pre-convincing that he is somebody to know, like, and trust. His name's Joey. And I can't say his last name because I'm really like I, I failed phonics. So <laughs> oh, no. I think it's Ragona. Sorry, Joey, if you <laughs> listen to this. But uh yeah, it was it was great. Have you had experiences like that? Yeah. I have. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, I think I think the thing that you pointed out 
that I want to reflect back to you, James, is that you said it took six to eight months. So I think for people doing a lead magnet, they need to realize it's not going to, sometimes it will be overnight if it's Mm -hmm. a quiz, but sometimes it's that six to eight months, but then they are your definite ideal audience because they have trusted Mm -hmm. you and it took that long to build. And I feel like in this type of audience and market, like you have to show that you're going to last and not burn out and that you're the real deal. And so, yeah, it's okay. Just keep going and don't get discouraged. (laughs) Keep doing it and people will start to trust you more. Cool. So we've, we've heard a little bit about Lisa, how she uses her lead magnets. Uh, Dawn, she mentioned your lead magnet. How do you use lead magnets in your practice? Yeah. So it's a little bit new to me, honestly. I feel like I was so overwhelmed when I was starting that I um, focused more on social media. And I mean, I had the podcast and I had so much going that now that I've really honed in, I actually enjoy it because it's my lead magnet is, well, one of them is um, the therapist matrix assessment tool where people can um, kind of holistically look at their life as a therapist and all the layers that it goes into, and they can take an assessment and um, kind people of love rate, assessments. I know, and rate where they feel <laughs> like they are. And then my email, like a, my newsletter and email list kind of follows that and helps them go even deeper. Um, so that's how I use it, but I get a lot of feedback from that and I'm watching my AWeber stats and I'm like, oh, wow, 60% opened it. That's mm-hmm. cool. Like, and I'm like, so I can tell if they like it or not and which ones they don't like. And so that's one way. Another way, um, I love doing free webinars, especially for group practice owners on just developing team culture. So I've done a couple webinars that are free. And that's how I've built my email list. Um, And I feel like that's a lead magnet, even though you can do it live, but then that you can also um, have it on your website and that people can sign up for it and you get their email that way for later. And I also double it as a podcast episode. (laughs) So I like triple use it. Well, episode six is going to, in season two, is going to be on webinars. So All right. we'll get uh, get into that and, and how that can drive some traffic. And also with like, well, I'm getting into the weeds, but joint ventures, like if you partner with people, mm-hmm. uh, they can promote you, you yes. can promote them. Uh, it's it's webinars are a great lead magnet, but it, it's broken out because they're, they're a little more technical mm-hmm. than just sending a worksheet to somebody. But uh, you do them well. You know, I did one with David Hall and I got 200 people on my email list. So just That's from right. the webinar, he has a bigger list. That's why joint joint ventures are important. Yeah. Um, how I use how I use lead magnets. So I think my biggest one, of course, is the podcast. I think that's been growing steadily. It didn't start out, you know, I got like 10 people in the beginning or something, but it's <laughs> it's it's steadily grown. Um to where there's there's uh, more downloads every every month, so that's good to sh- see. Uh, I do have the uh, how to validate your course topic, which I'm probably gonna have to do some more research on that because it doesn't seem to be generating the traffic I would like it to. Uh, even though when I was like doing research on how I wanted to create courses, I was like, oh man, I don't want to invest time into things if I know if it's not gonna make money. So I was like, oh, how do you do that? And so then I made the worksheet on it. But um, to me, that was a big question. Uh, but it's uh, it, it hasn't been quite the uh, the barn burner. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like it doesn't it hasn't been beating a path of traffic to the door like the, the uh, podcast has been doing better. And I do have a quiz. Uh, it's at the end of the episode now where um, David talks about the builder type assessment. So that's gotten a few people, but it it also didn't um, like we spent time on the quiz and he spent a lot of time on it. We identified your builder types. And then we had if you came out with like somebody who wants to build systems or somebody who wants to like grow group practices, you had a different outcome. We had resources for the different outcomes. Um, But maybe I just didn't promote it like I promoted on the podcast, but maybe I didn't talk about it during the show enough to get people to sign up for. For that so that was that's where i'm at with the uh, lead magnets um i've been doing uh just i do try to do uh interview people on the podcast that are um interesting and that uh help 
help help the listeners. And I have been sending out an email, you know, to the email list about the podcast and other resources that people can get. So that's also been useful. So that's how I've been using um, podcast uh, lead magnets. Yeah, I wonder if you need to rename that quiz because yeah. it doesn't like I I hear that and I'm like I don't know if that's for me. You know, mm-hmm. like what? I guess I'm like what? What's the end result that that it's going to give somebody? Yeah. You know. I don't know. Just kind of thinking. No, that's good. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good, the builder type assessment. Like what, if if it's supposed to give you tools and resources to help you scale your, your therapy practice based on your, 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 your acclimate, you know, what you're interested in or what you're good at, Mm -hmm. then, um, cause, cause the idea for some of this podcast was you don't have to be good at everything. You know, you don't have to grow your practice the way somebody else grows to practice you have a way of growing your own practice oh, no. that um, might be systems it might be people it might be products it might be networking but everybody has their own system right we thought it was a, a great way to to communicate it but it might not have come across i it, i but, think if you put the per, the word personality in there you'd get more takers mm-hmm. because it does sound you like build it, a type yeah like it well even like what type of therapy practice owner are you like your, your therapy practice personality or something. I'm just trying to get. Mm. I think I don't know. I'd be more likely no, to take good. that than I would the builder because I don't know what builder. Like what? What does that mean? Yeah, you know. And maybe getting feedback before spending hey. eight months into <laughs> it would be <laughs> beneficial to well to attracting more people. But see, I think we have to all learn from that because I have yeah. I have gone down that path too where I thought this was yeah. it. This is gonna and then. It just doesn't. And that's okay. We have to pivot. Like we just have Mm -hmm. to not be emotionally attached to Mm -hmm. and just throw our hands up in the air and say, oh, I can't do this. It's not working. It's like, okay, that didn't work. But what else might work? You know, it's not giving up and, you know, oh, I've tried everything. No, you haven't. You tried one lead magnet (laughs) and you tried maybe one social media channel and you have to look at all the pieces. (laughs) It's so true. But I've been there and I still get it. I'm that's why I'm I'm like I'm I am just like you guys got to use Pinterest because Pinterest is where people are looking for solutions to their problems like Google. So if you're not using Pinterest, then you should be using Google ads. And let me tell you, Pinterest ads are a lot. I think this is just from what I've learned over the years. Um, you just can't get everybody on social media because your algorithm, they, it stinks, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and if you can, that's why you want to get them on your email list. So then you can nurture the no like, and trust and you can, you can build relationships. And let me tell you, I have people now on my email list. I didn't know from Adam or Eve, and they are now friends. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. Like I put a lead magnet on Pinterest. And I I opened it up international because what I was doing was like any any therapist all over the world, as long as you speak English, we could probably, you know, have something in common here. And I have just connected with some of the most lovely therapists all over the world. And hmm. it's just been it's been heartwarming and it's been re- like reaffirming like, yes, you know, people are looking for this information all over the world. So. I don't know. I'm just I'm a big believer in Pinterest. And um, and if if you can afford Google ads, then then that would be my second my second I option idea. All right. So those are two tips from Lisa. Dawn, do you have any tips before we, we do our takeaways? Mine are as practical as Lisa's, I think, because I'm still newer to this. But I think I just want to mention you want to repel as much as you want to attract. Mm. And so I think taking the personal, like Lisa said, take the personal attachment to everything away just let it go it's like throw spaghetti at the wall and see what fits and because you're still building Mm -hmm. but once you have like thousands of followers then you can ask them but right now you're just trying what works okay this one didn't work either shift it how do i shift it okay what do i need to do and just know that some people are going to repel but others are going to attract and both are okay and you want that to get your ideal client um it's okay. So just hang in there and don't right. give up. <laughs> okay. Uh, my tip would be uh, have a, have a uh, like mention it. Well, this is almost like the takeaway, but mention it as often as possible, like on your blog posts, yeah. in your interviews, 
in your podcast, on your YouTube page, on your Pinterest page that you're going to start tomorrow. Basically, yeah. <laughs> like it's got to be it's it's got to be everywhere. Um, and I one uh, one um, uh, I think it was Clear Brand. That's a that's a place that does uh, like web pages. I re- I signed up for their email and I get their email and their podcast all the time. But Clear Brand is like if you're gonna offer something on your web page, make sure it looks the same all the way through your web page. So the button needs to be you know my download at the top of the page, my download in the middle of the page, and my my free download at the bottom of the page, so that people see it over and over again. And they don't, their brain isn't like, what is this? What is this? Oh, it's my download. It's my free download. It's, it's my, it's my value. I can get this. And the person who gets to the end of the page and they see it five times on your page at the end, uh, they're more likely to click it. If it looks the same, this, this is their research, not mine, but they're more likely to click it than if uh, you had it like said five different ways, they don't know what it is. So that's my tip. All right, we're going to close out the episode with one takeaway. So we'll start with Lisa. If people could remember one thing, what's their one takeaway for the show? Create your lead magnet so you can start your email list. (laughs) (laughs) Take away. Do it. All right. Just do it. All right. And Dawn, your takeaway? You can have more than one lead magnet. Have multiple and don't get too attached to one. There you go. I like it. Great tip. And mine is uh, restating what Lisa said. Get started. Just just do it. You don't have to wait for the perfection. That is my that is my problem. I wait for perfection. Oh, Dawn says, there's there. and Lisa, okay, I mean, so we all have the same problem where we want the perfect and then it takes weeks and months to get it done. We're, we're experimenting. You're experimenting with what works and you don't know if it works until you get it out there. So, true. so start getting things out there. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Scaling Therapy Practice. Please take those intentional steps towards sustainable growth, and we'll see you next time. Psych Maven is proud to support the Scaling Therapy Practice podcast. And if you are someone looking for ideas that are tailored to your own personal style on how to scale and grow your own impact and income as a mental health provider, we hope you might check out our free online assessment. If you go to stp.psychmaven.com, you can take our free personal inventory and find out what your builder type is as a helping professional. This assessment is quick and fun, and it comes with tons of customized resources with your results, so you can discover the best ways to scale that match your own personality. Find the assessment at stp.psychmaven.com. That is stp.psychmaven.com. P-S-Y-C-H-M-A-V-E-N dot com. Have fun with it. Thank you for listening to the Scaling Therapy Practice. I hope you enjoyed the show. I want to remind you that the content shared today is for general information and entertainment purposes only. It should be considered as legal or tax advice. If you need a professional advice in those areas, please consult with a licensed attorney or accountant but thank you so much for listening the scaling therapy practice is part of the scicraft network